another guy that we both had on our list is Riley Mills. Now, obviously, Riley last year was a key rotation player as an interior guy. We predict that he's going to be the starting big end this year while also playing some inside at times mm-hmm. as well, which we saw in the spring game. Vince, we both have him as a breakout player. Again, I, I'm going to have it. We're going to have a similar conversation with Riley that we did with Marist. He's going to go from a rotation player that had, you know, some, some decent numbers, right? Sure. And, 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 you know, the, I, I compared him, if you look at like his year two production and compare that to like Jerry Tillery's, and and you compare that to Jason Adamiola and guys like that, his year two production was pretty good uh, compared to those guys. And so does he kind of take that next step? So Riley last year had 16 tackles, three tackles for loss, and three sacks. If you look at year two for Jason Adamiola, it was 25 tackles on more snaps, four tackles for loss, no sacks. If you look at Jerry Tillery's sophomore year, he had 37 tackles, three tackles for loss, and three sacks. Riley had three sacks in his sophomore year. Jason Adamiola and Riley and, and Jerry Tillery combined for zero. And neither of them had, you know, uh, just the the pass rushing impact that he brought to the table. Now, Jason was very disruptive in, as a sophomore in 2019. Again, four tackles for loss. Riley brought more of a pass rushing element to the table, which is why I really like him more as the yeah. big end, Vince. Yeah. Because Myron Tungvalo was a really good run defender for Notre Dame last year as a big end, but he didn't bring a ton as a pass rusher. Right. Adi Takumba Ogandiji had some moments as a pass rusher. Khalid Kareem was a more consistent clutch pass rusher. Even though his sack numbers were never great, Khalid was a good pass rusher. It's just usually he was sending people the you know his pass rushes were pushing the quarterback into the arms of someone else. I think we're going to see arguably the best big end set pass yep. rush production this year uh, as a unit that we've seen really since you probably have to go back to Stefan when Stefan too was here. Yeah. And it's not just Riley Mills. It's going to be others. I think we're going to see Justin Adam Mule in that role at times. I think we're going to see Alexander Ehrensberger in that role at times as a pass rusher. I think Nana's probably more of a run defender, but he's had some moments where he's flashed some ability to get, you know, get around the edge with his power. So as a whole, I think that position is going to be much more effective against the pass, but Riley's going to be that guy, yeah. in my opinion. Now, the question is, Vince, what kind of jump does he make? Sure. I really think as long as he's healthy with everything that I've heard, I think Riley Mills is going to be a really good football player for Notre Dame this year. Yeah, I I would. I'm not obviously. I can't predict everybody is going to be what I think Maris Lufau is going to be. That that's not where I'm going with that. It. Would turn I, this into a homer show, right? And that is nowhere near where I <laughs> Isaiah Foss is going to be the sixth best player on right. this football team. <laughs> yeah, right. I I am of the belief that Riley Mills is going to turn into a solid, dependable starter whose sack numbers are going to go up. He's going he I don't think it's a stretch when you say that this is going to be the best pass rushing defensive line that Notre Dame has seen in a while. I think I would also say that it's going to be the best pass rushing duo tandem from the big end from the big end position. Mm-hmm. I think him and well Justin I think is going to go back and forth. I was thinking of him as a big end, but I I think they're going to get a lot more production out of the big end from a pass rush uh, scenario than they have mm-hmm. over the past five seasons, five, six seasons. Yeah. Right? Well, I think the only group that can maybe contend with it, you look at that 18 group that had Aquara on one side, you had Khalid Kareem, plus you had Daylin and Adi Takumba Ogandishi coming off the bench as well. And, and, you know, but that group, you know, that group combined for, see, 12 and a half, 14 and a half, 16 sacks. As a whole defensive line? As a, no, no, no. Just the edge players. Oh, just the edge players. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, Isaiah Foskey by himself is going to get kind of close to that. Yeah, right? I was going to say they're not going to, they're going to blow that out of the water. <laughs> right. It, you know, I mean, just last year, I mean, this is, this is, we're trying to put this, the, the pass rush of production into the perspective, right? Sure. Last year, I just said that, that Khalid Kareem, Julian Aguara, Dalen Hayes, and I Takuba Ogandiji combined for 16 sacks together in a year where we all thought Notre Dame had one of the five best defensive lines in the country and right. was a primary driver of them going 12 and 0. Last year, Isaiah Foskey and Justin Adamiola alone combined for 16 sacks. Right, right. And and then you throw three from Riley Mills. You know, you've got two from Myron, two from Nana, uh, one from Alexander Ahrensberger. You're over 20 sacks. What you, right. what Vince and I believe is that, that we're going to see more of that this year from the edges. Yes. And for two reasons. One is, 
I think they're all a year older and better. Yeah, It's not a coincidence that Riley Mills in his three sacks last year, two of them came in the Virginia game when he was playing big end because Myron right. was out with an illness. It's not a coincidence. The other part of it too, Vince, is I, I think going back to the first point, the, the upped production, because I think J.D. Bertrand is going to be a better blitzer as a Mike than he was a Will. I think he's going to be a better blitzer than Drew White was. I think Drew White's going to do some other things better, but I think – as a blitzer, I think J.D. is going to be more effective as a Mike blitzer. Obviously, Bo Bauer has proven to be a decent blitzer when used there. I think there's going to be a jump in production at the will p- position where he's going to come screaming through on some blitzes, which is then going to spin the quarterbacks out into the edge players as opposed to in the past it's been the other way around. And so I think those things factor into it. But I, I really have confidence that Riley Mills is going to yeah. come out this year and, and double his sack total at least and, and be a guy that's just a – a really good, strong player. He's going to have to become a little bit more consistent from a, like at times his leverage gets a little high. You know, he's, sure. he was a young player. You know, right. the, the, the technique wasn't always consistently there. He had a good start to the spring, but it wasn't great, but he had a great finish to the spring from what we heard. And what that tells me is he really took well to Al Washington's coaching. Yeah, Absolutely. And I think that's also part of it is I think that 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 he needed a, a little bit more of an advanced repertoire. And I think we're going to see that from him. And and again, I think the the product the sack production is from him is going to be there. And I think that he's a guy that's going to have at least five, six sacks this season, which again, that's not huge numbers, but again, the way that they run this defense, a lot of times on third down, he won't even he might not even be on the field. Right. Unless they move him inside with Jason and put Justin on the outside with Foskey. I mean, we could see something like that as sure. well. And then he's rushing as an inside guy on third down. It's more of a speed package or right. NASCAR, right. whatever you want to call it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So I, I think he's going to be a difference maker. And I think yeah. that unique combination of him and I think Foskey and I think the trio of Foskey and Mills and Justin Adamiola is going to be Notre Dame's best pass rushing tr- like group in a long time. To your point, Vince, I think yeah. – just the numbers are going to be excellent. I mean, you you go you'd have to go back and look at that 2012 group of Tuit, Shimbo, and Cap. You know, which combined for 24 and a half sacks, just the three of them. And they technically were all edge players. You know, Prince was an outside linebacker. Cap and Stefan were both ends. Yeah. Yeah, but that uh, the, I'll be shocked if this group that trio doesn't surpass that group. Mm-hmm. No, I don't, and I don't. I hate to say it like this because that group has some names and they're playing in the NFL and all of those different things, but I don't think it's going to be all that close. Yeah. To be that's a lot of sacks. I mean, I that's, yeah, that's a but, lot of sacks. But, I think it'll be close. Yeah. I just think, think because also is that defense in fairness was not a, a defense. that was really turned loose. It was a three, four read and react two gapping defense. It, I think it's impressive that they had as many sacks as they did. It just shows how good they were, especially the six from cap because he, he definitely wasn't put in pass rushing mode. But I think this group has a chance. And I think Riley's going to be a big part. And, and it's important that he be he has to be that guy too, Vince, because if you can't take some pressure off of, of Isaiah Foskey, then it's going to be a lot easier for teams to double team. Because I'll tell you this, like first couple games of the year against Ohio State and, Cat, and Marshall and Cal, they're going to look at 99 and say, that's the guy we're least worried about. Yep. And we got to make, make sure him. 7 and 57 don't beat us. And and that's going to be the key. And now, oftentimes, you're going to see seven and fifty-seven. That's Isaiah Foskey and Justin Adamiola together, because normally Notre Dame is an underfront. Underfront means the three technique is the same side as the Viper. Now, one thing that I noticed in the in the blue gold game, Vince, is I saw a lot more overfronts in that game. Now, what I don't know if that was just them staying in their under alignment and then bumping guys over, so then the nose maybe bumps out, or if they actually flip, which teams normally do on an over and under front. I don't I don't I didn't study it enough to 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 know that, but I did see some overfronts in that game. Uh that could get interesting because if you got Jason on one side and Isaiah on the other, now all of a sudden you're looking at some really interesting protection issues for teams. But uh I think that's the thing is he's gonna have to step up early in the year just from a practical standpoint, Vince, and show that he's capable of really leading this le- leading that position group into the production that we think it can have and needs to have, to be completely honest with you. 